general, like you know, these uh, other commercial government solutions, jam, do they have similar weaknesses or is this specific to the moment? Yeah, this is specific to the iPhone integration. If I remember, uh, basically, the two things. But you can do that. It's, this is free, and yeah, I don't want to pay for implementation. That's, you've got your devices, they phone home to a central management server, 
they get their settings, they get updated that way. And then there's the one-time application. I used to work for a company that was like eight people, and at the time we had three people with iPhones, so we wanted to manage those iPhones to make it easier to set up stuff. So we just use the iPhone configuration utility to deploy the profile to these three iOS devices. It was really simple. You know, we didn't have to pay for a full-blown MDM solution and things like that. We just managed it off of one laptop and had three basic profiles, but <coughs> So I pulled this directly off of the uh, Apple website. This is greater control for corporate owned devices. Kind of like the corporate owned thing or owned corporate devices. Uh, you know, we, we have a saying uh, when we're doing penetration tests where we run into a system that's already been compromised by something else. Uh, usually like a JBoss or Tomcat server with cmd.jsp you already install this web app. We've got a command console right there. We call them certified pre-owned systems. So maybe think of this. So, uh, but you know, Apple talks about setting up MBM settings, everything like that. They've got their own product. We're going to use kind of part of that. So malicious techniques. So we want to put one of these malicious profiles onto a device. How do we do this? You can do direct USB connection. If you know the passcode, or if the device doesn't have a passcode, you can easily put these profiles directly on the device via USB. Really, really simple. You plug in, you say, yes, I want to trust this computer. You go ahead, open up the profile manager, say install, done. I mean, if it requires a passcode, you put in a passcode on the device, you're done. This works really well for doing things like kiosks. We'll do a kiosk assessment of an iPad app, something like that. We want to put, say, our port swinger CA to intercept the SSL traffic with our proxy. Well, we can go ahead and apply this uh, malicious profile to set up the wireless access point we want to use, set up the SSL cert. We're going to talk about all of that in a minute, but this is really handy for kiosk devices. So there's USB connection, there's website deployment. Uh, for those of you who scanned that QR code that should take you up to the next five blog, I apologize if this is not scanning for you. Um, all it's going to do is just set up the wireless access point, which is sitting over there. It doesn't actually go out to the internet. It just connects you to it and puts a little web clip, which we're going to talk about later. Um, nothing malicious. It's just kind of a interactive thing if you want to check out the mobile config. So uh, you can just put out a direct mobile config link to say, hey, this is a cool thing that you can configure your iPhone to do. You know, some kind of social engineering thing to get people to open the link on their iPhone. I know XSS and serve up you know, malicious mobile config on mobile only sites using QR code links. Hey, connect to the wireless hotspot here. Install this profile first in order to get the connection settings. That was kind of the thing we were showing before everybody came in here. So that's one way of doing it through direct URLs, through emails. Uh, this one can be kind of handy for, say, an on site social engineering thing where. We want to go ahead and get profiles on the people's smartphones before we show up on site. So we go ahead and send out a phishing email saying, urgent, if your device is not in compliance anymore, we're switching over to a different MDM platform. We need you to get your iPhone you know, installed with the latest profile, otherwise you're not going to be able to get access to your work email, et cetera, et cetera. Make a very convincing email, just attach it down at the bottom, click on it, prompt to install. Very simple way to deploy. It's I usually just send the profiles to my own phone that way, just to make sure that they work well. So once we've got these mobile configs onto an iOS, well, iOS device, what can we do? The primary attack we're going to talk about is the wireless attack. This one's really simple. Uh, this is kind of what's being emulated with the QR code that I was showing you earlier. You set a default SSID, you set the passphrase to connect to that SSID, then you go ahead and set up some additional settings for them. How about a root SSL CA certificate? So all of your SSL traffic that goes for me, I can go ahead and intercept that. Now it doesn't apply for certain applications, but any iOS application that inherits the you know, normal proxy settings of iOS, uh, most of the time you're going to be able to get that SSL traffic if you install that from CA. Setting up these default proxy settings. Uh, so when you do connect to my wireless network, you're going to proxy all of your traffic through a specific host. Uh, we can easily capture credentials with this. I'm going to show you one example that is uh, pretty interesting. Some of you may find this a little shocking. But uh, the other thing is 
you know, set up a VPN. You can set up VPN settings so that the device will just automatically VPN back into your VPN network. And you can go ahead and start catching traffic back on that backend. So, you know, general idea is you get the MDM controlled iOS device within physical Wi Fi range. That's why I said this is kind of convenient for on site social engineering attacks. This is where we kind of came up with the whole idea. We're like, well, how could we abuse this? So, you know, you take a little portable, I don't know how many people can see this here, but a little portable <coughs> Wi Fi wireless access point, hook it up to a battery. This fits in my pocket, and this will run the entire day. Go ahead and hook up you know, a little Raspberry Pi or something like that. Something you can run a proxy off of and proxy everything through that. And then just start walking around the building or sit in the parking lot or get people within you know, physical proximity and they connect to that wireless access point. You go through the attacking proxy, capture all of that stuff, and send them off to the internet. So you know, if they've already got the SSL traffic being intercepted, they may just you know, go ahead and trust everything and everything should work fine. So um, one of the things that, this is the shocking thing I don't think a lot of people realize, is the Microsoft Active Sync settings, uh, it sends authorization basic when it goes to phone home to Active Sync. So this is your Microsoft Exchange email accounts on your iPhone. When they phone home to mail.example.com, they're sending your domain cred. So the hack me domain, the hack me test account with password123 as the password, that's that basic C4 authorization basic token right there. Uh, kind of surprised me the first time I saw it because I would have expected something at least a little more secure. It's at least sent over SSL, so I mean, this is where it comes in handy to get that root CA installed on the device. But these are domain credits. You know, well, we can do stuff with domain credits. That's great. So there's also application attacks. Uh, if you write your own custom malicious application. You can go ahead and deploy that through MDM onto an iOS device using this type of attack. You can set up custom applications, you can set up web clips. So for those of you who downloaded that mobile config off of that QR code, I created just kind of a dummy AppSec CA uh, web clip, which is just taking you to the next by blog. Uh, you can do this for credential grabbing, say, hey, this is your intranet site, this is how you're going to access your SharePoint document, something like that. And then you put that in an email or you know, get somebody to click on it, put up a little prompt to say, hey, put in your credentials here, and those get locked back in on the server. Kind of handy. Really, it's just about getting more credentials or potentially you know, using a malicious app to exploit something else on the device. So here we can see this is the little application it's going to install. It's going to pull up my blog post talking exactly about what we're talking about today. Uh, if you did actually install that profile and download it, it will expire on Friday. I set it to destroy itself on Friday. It's another fun thing that you can do with these and it's you know, kind of keep your profile forever. You can also force it to take you to the market as market as removable or not. We can kind of drill through those settings if we've got additional time at the end here. But uh, you know, once we've got these credentials, what can we do with that? Well, typically on an external pen test, we'll find some kind of authentication source facing the internet. So if you've got a you public know, web, ac web access uh, server, something like that, we can go ahead and try those credentials. You know, if it's say an on-site social engineering, if we can walk right in and we've already got the main credentials, we can start walking onto machines on the network. So it's pretty handy to have. Uh, demo time for anybody that does want to install this. Uh, all it does is connects you to the wireless access point and installs that web clip. It will remove itself on Friday. Uh, it doesn't do anything malicious, but you know, this is one of those examples of how you can get people to you know, go ahead and download that malicious mobile config. The creation of this is extremely simple. Like when I said at the beginning, this is a very non-technical technical attack. Like this is extremely simple. This is the iPhone configuration utility. It's available for uh, Windows as well as OS X. Uh, I've just got to run the Windows machine here. You just create a new profile, name it whatever you want. It gives it its own identifier. You know, say it's part of OWASP, whatever you want. Make it look legitimate. You set up your Wi-Fi settings here. Uh, it's just going to connect to the AppSec CA wireless, automatically join to it when you're within physical proximity. Really handy for us as hackers. Set up a password for it so you know, not everybody can join. Make it very specific. And then you set up your proxy settings as well. This is extremely simple to set up. It takes like five minutes.
wanted to do all of this. The only really complicated part is figuring out which uh, credential you actually want to install from the Windows version of this. So the Windows version, it gives you a list of all of your credentials or all of your, uh, your certificate authorities. And you've got you know, 150 plus on a typical machine. So to find the actual uh, SSL certificate that I wanted to install from my own uh, certificate stores, it took a while to search through all of these. So this was kind of a pain. But yeah, you basically give it the certificate authority that you want to trust. So this is the intercepting CA for the verb proxy. Uh, this is just what I use for testing. And you just install that certificate authority. Really, really simple. So that gets you in the middle of the SSL traffic. Here's a web clip. Uh, just name it AppSec CA, point it to the blog. You can make it non-removable. So as long as you've got that profile on your device, it can or cannot remove that. Make full screen, give it an icon, make it look pretty. Really, really simple. So you sign the config profile and export it. Again, really simple. We'll give you the .mobile config file. You can do what you want from there, put it on a web server, email it out. The one thing that gets a little tricky, so for those of you who actually scanned it and got the mobile config, it's probably going to show up as not trusted or not verified. My phone's set up on my device as like a testing device, so it shows up as verified and trust that in the signing certificate. You could just sign this with an actual Apple development certificate. That should be fine. That should work for you. Uh, I haven't played around too much with the OS X version to make sure that, you know, that it does for, uh, for sure sign everything properly, but you know, if you have a CA that's trusted to go ahead and sign that, it's going to look verified when you go ahead and deploy that. And it does tell you what it does. And you know, people aren't necessarily going to go through and drill down and go, oh, it installs a certificate. What does that mean to me? They might not realize it actually there's a root, uh, root CA that's actually going to intercept that SSL traffic. But you get a description, looks pretty legitimate. So uh, you know, in terms of preventions for this kind of stuff, uh, start with clean phones and add them to the MDM. If you've already got you know, a BYOD kind of situation where somebody's phone may already be jailbroken or rooted or controlled by <coughs> somebody else, if their phone's not clean, you start adding it to MDM. There's only so much detection that that MDM solution can do. Uh, if you go to our NetSpy blog, one of my coworkers, Eric Gruber, wrote a great post about how he was able to bypass the AirWatch MDM solution, where he basically took his Android device that was already uh, rooted and he was intercepting the requests that were going back to the MDM server and just saying, hey, you know what? I'm not jailbroken, and I'm totally in compliance with your company compliance. And they fixed that since he wrote the blog post, but it's really interesting blog post how you can fool the MDM and say, oh, okay, no, he's cool, that's totally legitimate, that's fine. Uh, prevent users from installing their own MDM profiles or any other you know, certificate profiles, anything like that. You can lock that down with uh, MDM clients or MDM setups and add your devices to some kind of mobile device management before somebody does it for you. Uh, you don't want your company resources being compromised because you don't have control of these devices. So uh, I think we've got a couple extra minutes here. Uh, first off, any questions? Okay, cool. So uh, there's the QR code again, real quick. You can find me at, at KFossen on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on the NetSpy blog as well. I'll actually be down at the NetSpy booth after this uh, if anybody wants to chat or has any questions after that. But I'll show you the iPhone config utility, real quick. If I put it on the other screen. Uh, okay, let's see if I can shoot that down. That's close enough. All right, so uh, these are all the different things that we can configure. Just in general, you know, like here's the name, here's the usage, all of that stuff. You can set whether or not this profile can be removed. So I can set this as a permanent profile. Uh, you can also set automatic profile removal on the 29. Uh, so if you want to do your assessment, you've got a week to do your assessment, you want those profiles removed and cleaned up by the time you're gone, you can easily set that stuff up. You can go ahead and set passcode restrictions. Uh, you can make somebody passcode 18 characters or whatever you want, just more annoyance than anything else. Uh, restrictions, these ones are kind of fun. Uh, this is the specific applications you can use. So again, this kind of comes down to a prank level at this point. 
you don't want somebody to use the camera or FaceTime or something like that, uh, you can go ahead and remove that kind of stuff from that profile. And you know, on the other side of it, if you're actually using this tool for the iOS devices in your organization, you can go ahead and lock these things down too. It's more of a positive. Uh, let's see here. Really basic stuff. The Wi-Fi, the VPN we already talked about, set up a default mail. There's a ton of stuff that we can go through. So I won't go through all of this, but just know that there's a ton of stuff that we can get set up here. Uh, we also want to set up our own, say, Apple and VM server on the back end and really continue that with an actual like, full server implementation. You can just go ahead and set up the full VM domain and get that set up here. So uh, that's all I have. Um, if anybody has any questions, like I said, you can find me on Twitter or the next one. Now, in general, this isn't really a bug. This is social engineering. And this is a news, you know, um, with your own disaster and your own device. Yeah. And thing. Uh, but if you follow those guidelines that Apple actually also puts out, can be pretty secure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, and so the, well, the long story short is it's not this if it's used properly, yeah. it's there is no bug in it in the deployment tools. It's just what you can do if you're not careful. Exactly. So the point that was being made up front here was that you can use these tools to properly configure things. And if you set things up correctly, you can prevent against attacks like this. This is just more of a an attack plan that we use for things like social engineering to make it easier for us to get onto those mobile devices and really show impact as to how vulnerable those devices can be or how vulnerable your MDM setups can be. Um, you know, there are MDM profiles that I can add to my device even though my device is already set up on an MDM setup. So you know, locking that down so you can't set up other profiles as well. Uh, do you have anything on the Android side that would like to a, a policy as quickly as a QR code. Um, so the, the QR code is based off of the URL that I'm hosting off of the NetSpy blog. Uh, okay. I set up the web server, server.org config files. Uh, for the Android side, I mean, pretty much all of the major MDM vendors out there you know, have their own configuration tools. I haven't looked into it for you know, something like this iPhone configuration, uh, but I'm sure that there's something very similar out there. I've got an iOS device. So it's any other questions? All right, cool. Well, thank you. I'll be down at the next five minutes. If everyone wants to say hi. Did you go to that little conference? Yeah.